Hi folks, welcome to the CAD and CAM tutorial for our 12 gauge shotgun shell that we're sending off to Tau Flatermouse to shoot through his shotgun. Before we dive in, if you want to download any of these models, we're offering them to folks that support us on Patreon. You can see the little icon up here with a link through it, like a buck a month, you get access to all this stuff. We like to keep these videos snappy though. So CAD and SOLIDWORKS CAM, integrated CAM and SOLIDWORKS with HSM. And we're also gonna use some Sprut CAM for the fourth axis stuff. Let's dive in. Here is our SOLIDWORKS model. It's what's called an assembly. So it's the model of the slug itself assembled with the three fins that are all identical. Assemblies in parametric CAD are how you deal with parts that have multiple parts to them. So let's edit and work on that 12 gauge slug first. Most of it was actually done in the video we just posted on using the uh, Tormach lathe with CAM for the first time. So we're going to start actually a little bit further ahead in this video. I think, let's see, yeah, about right here. So first thing we're doing is we're just drilling the holes for the dowel pins. These dowel pins were 0.052 that we got on McMaster car. So we used a number 53 drill to drill out the actual fin, that's a clearance fit, or and then we use a number 55 drill for a good press fit on this hole right here. We're, we're going through just far enough to make sure we hold that pin through um, both sides of this, um, the flanges here, and then we do a circular pattern, which just repeats that um, along the full rotation um, in three equal spaces. Pretty simple here. Now, this cut sweep, that for me, this is like advanced stuff. It's actually pretty simple though. Let's create a new one from scratch so that you can see how we do this rifling. So uh, sketch, we'll create a sketch on this plane right here. Now what you do, at least what I do, is create a sketch circle. It just is that outside uh, diameter right there. Now you can exit the sketch. Now what we do is we do an insert curve helix spiral and what we will do is oh that's annoying it has all my settings here saved this is supposed to look much harder than it is but you can see that would be like a thread pitch uh, quarter inch thread pitch right there what i figured out was if i do a four inch pitch and we we were just playing around with the revolutions you know you went to point three and you realized okay it's a little bit longer than you need to point two five was i think a little too too short when we actually do the cut i think i ended up at point two seven and if it's the wrong direction, you can switch reverse direction. You guys get it. Click OK. Now you've got this line that's a spiral flute around it. Now, if you actually want to edit the start angle of it, like let's say we wanted to try to get it a little further away, you can just do start angle of, say, change that to 50, and you see, oh, the other way, 30 moves it further away from the existing one. Now what we do is sketch on that same plane, Hit the S key and choose circle. And what we're going to do is sketch a circle and then dimension it 0.125 because I want to use a 1 8 inch ball end mill to cut that circle. Now it doesn't have to be, see it creates that coincident constraint. Ch hit the S key, change back to your select tool, click on that little thing, hit the delete key. But I don't actually want it to be coincident with that circle. Because we're going to use the ball end mill and just barely scallop out like that. Now you can click exit, I think. And now what we do is under features, just do a swept cut. And it's pretty easy. Um, you can kind of see, you can choose your, the geometry that you're cutting and then the path it's following. So click in here and choose that line that we created or helix spiral and click okay. Boom, there you have it. It's that easy folks. So we can get rid of that because that was just to show you guys how to do it. And then same thing, just do a circular pattern to repeat that thing around the outside of it and then we did a cut revolve to cut out the top of our of our bullet tip and I tried to be this is as scientific as I get what I did was I created a line down here and I wanted it to be 45 degree angle out so that I could use a 45 or 90 degree included one of those mill drills and then we know the whole length is 0.3 and what I did with this line here is when it's, it's um, kind of sketchy, but it lets me basically see where my new Z0 is 
once I flatten this thing out because you don't have a flat surface to select. Now that we've got that dimple in there, we need to add the three cuts out, the three cuts, triangular cuts that make it look nice and evil. So if we jump forward here for a second, what we can do is take a look. To, to create these, we need to add a plane. So we did insert, reference geometry, plane, and you'll see in a second what that's going to let us do. So first reference will be, um, we're actually going to choose the front plane, and the second reference We'll keep it parallel. The second reference will be the tube, and that's going to put a plane. See how that creates that plane right there? Now, go to sketch, create a sketch on that plane, and get it lined up. Now what you can do, even though the plane looks like it's down there, you can create your line tool. And so, for instance, what I would do is, see it's, um, let's, let's go create this uh, from scratch here real quick. So, sketch on that plane we just created, plane 2 now, and choose a line, and you see you get a snap 2, go down here, go over to here, and go back, and then let's dimension this as 45 degrees, and then what you can do is just choose the depth that you want, whatever floats your boat, like so, and then let's do mirror entities, and entities mirror, we're going to mirror just these two lines about that center line, and click OK. Now, I don't know, I, I, I usually change the center one to construction so that it doesn't think it's, um, doesn't think it's um, actually going to be used for the cut. And then we can do an extrude cut. And what we can do here is up to um, a surface. I think we can choose the front plane. And that'll go straight to the center like so, and then again, the same thing, we'll do a circular pattern, and we can just choose this ring here, and all the way around, three of them in equal increments, and click OK. It's that easy. And I think well, that's certainly the most complex part to it. Moving along, we did a drill bit hole cut down the center that you can see runs down to there, and then we created a new plane on the top surface and then we just drilled a hole down to the center and did a circular pattern around the part. And then if you want to just take a quick look at the wire view, you can see that shows that those intersect in the center. I wanted to make sure the drill went all the way through so that very important that that airflow and aerodynamic could get all the way through there and blow out the side holes. And that's that. Let's hop back over to the fins, right click, open part. Pretty darn straightforward. What I tried to do was leave this edge solid. The idea, and we'll switch to the wire view here, is that when these things open, by not chamfering this little edge here, um, they should hold pretty close to, you know, they shouldn't be able to overextend, e.g. they shouldn't be able to go like there. That should sort of be the limit, like so. All right, let's make the flap, but before we do so, let's note this is a 0.5 inch diameter and this is 0.7 inch diameter or 3.5 radius. So new, new part. We'll create a sketch on the front plane and we'll choose the circle tool. Just sketch two circles. Hit the S key on your keyboard, choose smart dimension. Let's, let's do 0.55. That's gonna make it actually a little bit smaller uh, or thinner than the um, part which we want, and then 0.7. Basically give us some cushion. Now S key, line, click on the center point, go out to here, double click, that keeps the tool active, click on the center line, click you know anywhere over here, you'll see it snaps to that coincident, double click, S key on the keyboard, S smart dimension, and then choose this line, that line, and let's say like 60 degrees. Now, a lot of ways you can do this with different tools here, it's just how I do it. Trim entities, let's get rid of all this other stuff. And then let's do features, extrude 0.37, that should give us a little bit of cushion over the 5, 3 eighths inch diameter of that, or dimension of that groove. Now let's create the drilled hole, so sketch on this plane, choose the circle tool, and we said that is a 0.052 hole, and you can get scientific with it in terms of how you want a dimension, or you can just place it by eye, which I know people are going to yell at me about. Features, extrude, cut, 
through all. And then, like I said, we want to, let's see here, we want it to, that to be a sharp corner, so we're just going to fill it, this one, just a tiny amount, not even like so. And that's how we make our little flap part. All right, cam for the slug. We're going to do some of the basic stuff in HSM, which includes this top part here. So we're doing a facing up, which will face it down to that height. Now what I did to see what, um, I wanted to see what the tool looked like. So I created a second instance of this, um, of, the, of the part. And that let me kind of just look at where I'm at for just this facing operation. It just was handy to do. Face it down, spec tool 11, which is my rougher, 2800 RPMs, 20 inches a minute. That's really all the parameters you have to set. Then we're going to drill, that's a 1 8 inch drill. Excuse me, spotting it first, the spot drill. And then <clears throat> there were two different types. There was a shallow hole and a full depth hole. Same recipe, just changed the depth. A 1 8 inch drill that I'm running at 5105 inches per minute plunge, and we're doing a deep drilling full retract on 20 thou pecs. The shallow hole you can see only takes you down to there. This one, if we unsuppress it and generate toolpath, you can see from the green line, takes us all the way down to there, well past the intersection of these holes, which is what we need. And then to cut the grooves here, we're using the same, one of those quarter inch mill drills and we're doing the trace operation. So 2D milling trace right here. It took me a second to figure this out. I'm still new to HSM. Um, you just select the edge, that was easy. And what, it, what I didn't figure out at first was axial offset passes. It makes sense when you really think about it, but it's a little bit unnecessarily complex. Um, for some reason, axial and radial, it makes sense when you think about it, but it's just not how I talk. Anyways. What I wanted to do was do what I would think of as roughing, roughing heights. So that's what lets you come down, like you can see here, and, um, and take multiple depth of cut passes. Now, I couldn't figure out how to do a, um, I had a problem if I chose all three lines within the same trace operation. I forget what, the, well, let's just take a look what the problem was. Um, and I couldn't figure out how to do a repeating pat. Oh, yeah, it was the problem was the way the tool rapids around. So not really a big deal. I just duplicated it. Um, but I would like to figure that out to either select the geometry or, frankly, even easier to do a uh, rotary pattern. I'm sure there's a way. Um, and then drilling the bottom holes, these three, quite easy. All I wanted to show was that we face it down, we spot it, and then what we did was, this is the number that's actually incorrectly labeled. That's a, we used here. That is correctly labeled, sorry. Um, what we did here was two separate drilling operations. The first one, we just drilled down through the flange. Then the second drill operation, we started you know, down here. I could have started a little tighter. That way, we're not wasting all this time drilling in between here. And you guys saw that if you were paying attention on the uh, video. Okay, let's take a quick look at the flap cam. Really simple there. I'm assuming that I'm using half inch square stock, which I think I set up in the, um, I use a sketch. I actually really like using sketches for defining your stock. It's just so much more re reliable to me. So we created a half inch um, piece of square aluminum. 2D adaptive, tool 31 is a quarter inch end mill, 5100 RPMs, 15 inches a minute. You choose the um, face, like so, uncheck machine cavities, and then you set your heights. We're machined further so that we can um, use the slitting saw to cut it off. And we're leaving 5 thou for a cleanup pass, which I do here, and the 2D contour with the same tool. Drilling out our hole, that's spotting it. Here we're drilling it. And then finally I come through with a slitting saw as a 2D contour. And what I did to control it, because I don't really know what I'm doing, I just try to hack it, is I created a sketch of a line. And I used that line for the slitting saw 
Um, we talked about that in the video we just posted on slitting saws. 500 RPMs, 15 inches a minute. Sounds crazy fast, relative, you know, really high feed rate relative to diameter. But it's because it has 30 flutes or 30 teeth. And we cut it, uh, we set it down the diameter of the, or excuse me, the thickness of the blade below the, the bottom of the model. And I think we can actually simulate um, this whole thing. And it, the simulation here is perfect. It's exactly what you need to see. Way, way too fast. Let's try that again. Oh, you know what? The simulation is not going to work because the screen recording software. Sorry, guys. But the simulation is really helpful when you're using that slitting saw just to make sure it cuts through um, enough, but not too much, and gives you an idea what you're what you're looking at. Finally, let's wrap up with some Sprut Cam fourth axis. Actually, super easy. So what you're going to do is you have to get your model imported. Is you're going to do new finishing 2D contouring, and what you're going to do is this is weird order operations. Click base surface first, then click on the cylinder, then you can click OK. Now you can choose the line, hit curve, and now what you got to do is go in. Sorry, but because we selected the base surface here, that means the outside of the part is Z0. So what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll edit the parameters, assume it's a 1 8 inch ball end mill and parameters top is Z0, bottom we're going to come down say you know 20 thou and now you should see that line hugs the part as you want. We can actually, actually it's quite nice, you can do uncheck this to control the lead ins and lead outs separately. So we'll lead in a lot here and it follows that curve, that's actually really cool and we'll just lead out a little bit over here that's where you got to be careful. I didn't want to, well, wouldn't actually hurt anything, but I didn't want to have it bend around like that. And then, God bless Sprout Cam, we can do transformation, copying around the A by 120 and 3. That would put it at 120 degree increments around 3, and you should see, click run, there's the second line, there's the third line. Okay, for the whole, do new roughing hole machining, we will go ahead and choose the center of our hole, click run, and you get one hole, that's perfect. Now to copy it around, just do transformation, copying A, 120 degrees, three times, click run. It's that easy. You got to, of course, edit your tool. Um, be a 1 8 inch drill, you guys get the idea there. But that is actually incredibly easy on the fourth axis there for Sprout Cam. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. Again, files are available to download on the Patreon website. We're really excited about Patreon because I don't want to ask for money. I, there has to be some reason to give back, but people do want to support the channel, which is freaking awesome. And what happens is now all of a sudden I feel uh, obligated. If you're a Patreon supporter and you've got help or you've got want something, you know, I, I'm, we're, we're there. Like, that's what it's all about. So we're going to, aside from really being a little bit more engaged, we try to respond to every YouTube comment, but that gets to be a lot. Um, but aside from uh, just helping out in general, posting the CAD files, we're going to do a monthly private video for the Patreon folks where you can, I have no agenda, it'll actually just be more Q&A or talking, answering questions, all that kind of stuff. So as always, folks, we appreciate the support. Hopefully you enjoyed the SolidWorks, Sprout Cam, HSM stuff here. Take care. See you soon.